And now we're going to start the very big conversation about data storage services. There are many things to consider when you're thinking about the data that you need for your service and how you're going to store that data somewhere. It turns out that building reliable and scalable services that manage state or data is substantially harder than building stateless services. Um, and there, there are many reasons for this. It's due to the data size. It's due to the speed of accessing that data. If the data size is very large, then you have to go and partition that data into different chunks. You need to replicate that data because if you have only one replica and then that hard disk that holds that data fails, then the data is gone. So you want to have multiple replicas to make sure that the data remains highly available. There's issues related to consistency of the data and security or accessing that data. There's disaster recovery. What if the whole data center goes down and that's where you had all your replicas? You want to do backup and restore of your data in case you have a bug in your code that might corrupt the data or in case you get hacked by someone who goes and corrupts your data. You might like to be able to back it up periodically so you can restore it to a known good state. There's, of course, the costs that are involved in storing the data and the cost of accessing that data and possibly performing, performing operations on that data. And then there's administration of the data. What are the schemas look like? Um, what's the format of the data, right, et cetera. So it's, it's a substantially more complicated conversation to talk about data storage services than it is to talk about stateless services. So I've known some people who have been trying to build their own stateful services. Um, it is incredibly hard thing to do for all these reasons that I have just mentioned. So I would strongly encourage you to not consider building your own data storage services and instead to go and use a robust, hardened storage service that's available. Things like SQL Server, or DynamoDB, you know, Amazon offers a number of database engines, Microsoft offers a number of database engines, there's many third parties, Cassandra, uh, MongoDB. These companies are in the database engine business. That is what they do all day, every day. And you really want to leverage their expertise. It is very hard, challenging to build this correctly uh, completely yourself. When you are selecting a storage service, you want to fully understand your service's requirements and the trade-offs when comparing the available services. Why do we have literally hundreds of database engines that are in the marketplace today? They all, they're all different. Some have different degrees of um, schemas for managing your state. Some do different amount of replication. Some do different amount of consistency. Uh, and you need to understand what you need for your service so that you can choose the database engine that's going to be proper for what you're trying to implement with your own service. I also have a note here at the bottom. It is actually quite common to use multiple storage services from within a single service. There may be some data that I want to store in a relational database with this kind of consistency. There might be some other kinds of data that I also need in my service that I'll store in, let's say, a NoSQL database where the consistency guarantees can be less. And maybe that makes it cheaper to run the serve parts of, cheaper to store those parts of the data and more expensive to store these other parts of the data. So there's just a lot of things that you need to keep in your mind and consider. And you might want to use multiple database engines within a single service to address your exact needs.